On this episode of Lumifa Classic, we get the head off the XJ6. Welcome back to Alone with a Classic and part two of getting the cylinder head off my new project car, that British Racing Green 1975 XJ6 you can see behind me right there. If you missed part one, I'll put a link to it up above and below so you can check it out. Basically, I removed everything around the engine, around the cylinder head to be able to get it loose and then I left it for a week or so, well, it was about a week, and sprayed some lubrication down the cylinder head studs and some ATF down there just to let it soak so I can hopefully get the head off. If you're completely new to the channel, I'll also make a playlist and I'll link to it up above and down below as well on all the videos on this car. There's already a few of them and I'm gonna keep adding to that playlist because we're doing a, um, a home rebuild, a let's call it a budget rebuild. It's not that it's budget that it's bad, it's just that we're doing it on a budget. So I'm showing that without spending too much money, um, anyone can get one of these cars back on the road from sitting for a while for a reasonable cost with normal tools that they have at home and just having a normal garage or workshop or just any flat area to work on. Oh, if you're new to the channel, check out that playlist and while you're doing this, you can check out my channel down below and hit the subscribe button and bell notification so you don't miss any updates because there'll be a lot of videos coming now on this car and on all the other cars as well on the channel. So let's head on over to the car and start taking that head off and hopefully it will come off pretty easily. It's a couple of days since the last video where we removed everything in the engine bay in order to get access to the cylinder head. I continue to spray lubrication down the cylinder head studs. I also pour some ATF down them and I think that's really done the trick because I just put a bottle jack on each side, one here and one over there which I can show in a little bit and just pumped it a couple times and you can see the head is already starting to come off. So before I want to do that, get the head completely off, I want to remove the oil that's up here because I don't want to make a complete mess of my workbench when I get this head off. So I'm going to get a syringe and just get all this oil out of here on both sides and then we'll continue to uh, pump up the jacks and hopefully get the cylinder head off really soon. I'm just gonna grab this syringe and try and suck up as much of the oil around here as I can just to minimize the mess or potential mess on the floor of my workshop and on my workbench when I take this head off. Quite a bit of oil came out actually, so that's great. We'll minimize the mess in the workshop. So now it's the last bit, hopefully try to get this head off. I just want to show where I position the bottle jacks. One over here to the right of the oil filter where the engine mount is. There's a flat piece of metal coming out from a the block there and just going up onto the cylinder head. And then on the other side, I put it on the ridge back here and up to the back of the cylinder head. Seems to be working well. And just to clarify, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this head at all. Despite their size, these ball jacks are really, really quite strong. They're rated for two tons each, but I'm not putting anywhere near that amount of force. I'm just barely pumping it and it's coming up really nicely. Don't want to put excessive force on this because you don't want to break anything. Start pumping this one, which lifts the front of the head mostly. Let's go over and pump the other one a bit. Now the rear is coming up also. The smaller of the studs are below the surface of the head now, so we're really making some progress. It's just all about being patient and not breaking anything. And to get the head off square so it doesn't get stuck on the studs. But so far, it's going really well. Now 
now I can put my whole hand beneath the cylinder head and the block. Just a little bit more and then I think I can actually lift it off. Took a quick break to give you guys a closer look. Let's see how far I've gotten. It's almost there. You can almost lift it off. So I'm just going to give it a couple more pumps and then we'll lift it off. And finally, I have that head off. To be honest, it actually came off pretty easily, but I think just being patient and pushing it off slowly is what did the trick. But man, they are pretty heavy. I kind of wish I had a helper to lift it off. It's not that they're overly heavy. It's just quite awkward and big once you have it up there on the stud. So if you have a helper, I highly recommend that you use one. Next time I take one of these off when we're doing it on my S-Type, definitely I'm gonna make sure to have a helper. One thing that's really important, if you notice, I've laid it down on the side. You don't want to lay it down with this side flat down because as you can see, some of the valves are open. This one's open, that one's open. Then you're going to bend those valves and then you'll be in a lot of trouble. So just lay it down on the side. I chose the exhaust side down. doesn't really matter which one. One thing I want to show first is, I don't know if you can tell, but just look at that cam lobe. This engine seems to be in really, really great shape. There we go. That cam lobe is very nice. There's no wear, no scoring, no nothing. I am going to take the camshafts off out later when we're going to do the shims, when we're going to put it all back together. Then we'll have a look at the bearings in here, but I think that they're going to be in really nice shape too. Um, other than that, it's just very, very dirty. Oil everywhere. Like I said, the valve cover gaskets leaked really badly on this engine just caked on oil everywhere so that will be an hour or so degreasing and cleaning this head off and we can tell where the um, valves or not where the valves but where it was leaking that cylinder is definitely burning coolant burning coolant on that cylinder that one as well and the other ones seem fine and that corresponds with the compression test that we did that these cylinders had high compression or pretty normal compression for an engine like this uh, these did not also one of them i had a little bit lower reading but i noticed that i don't think i got the tester all the way into the spark hole plug because when i took the plugs out i noticed that they were cross threaded so i'm gonna have to clean up all the threads as well here to make sure that the spark plugs come in nicely because Someone has cross-threaded these plugs in the past, which is really common on these engines. Which is kind of weird because the spark plugs are super easy to get to compared to the V12. If you look here, it's not overly obvious, but I think this is where water has come in on that one. Here, I think it's over here or maybe here that it came in. And over here, I think maybe somewhere here. And here's the head gasket as well. Looks to be fairly new. Can't really tell where it's blown, to be honest. Doesn't really show up on it. Doesn't look damaged in any place. Just over there from taking the head off. But I'll get to that a little bit later because I have a theory of what happened to this engine. But first, let's go check out the block. And here's the block. And here's the really good news. You see that there? The space between the cylinders. That confirms that this is a late Series 3 block. 
which is great because the series two blocks had didn't have these here and they had a tendency to crack if you're unlucky in between here these blocks hardly ever crack or can crack at all and they're much better blocks so that's great news if you look over here you can see dirty piston dirty piston clean piston kind of clean piston kind of clean piston cleanish piston so you can definitely tell where it's been leaking it's pretty obvious other than that the rest of the studs that are on there they all look really good nothing wrong with them so i think i can reduce all the studs on this engine i am going to take them out and take out the frost plugs and or the freeze plugs down here clean everything up and put them back in but they're definitely reusable Everything else looks really nice here. I'm just going to clean off the top surface here, clean off the pistons a bit. There's no obvious ridge or anything in here. They all look really nice inside, so should be nothing wrong with this block at all. Before I end this video, I want to leave you with my theory. My theory of why the head gasket failed on this engine could of course been that it just overheated because it lost all the coolant or could have overheated first, blown the hose, and then lost the coolant. But I think that you can also tell that this engine has probably not been together that long. I mean, it wasn't that long ago this engine was put together, I think. Everything has come off really easily. All the gaskets look really nice. That head gasket does not look old at all. The studs look really nice. I mean, this is, doesn't look like it's been together for 30 years. They don't look this nice inside after that many years. And those little nuts, um, dome head nuts, the 14 ones on top of the head, they were not on there tight at all. They felt very loose. I used that electric air hammer and had on the lowest setting. And on that lowest setting, it will not get a lug nut off a wheel. It's not strong at all. And it got all these off, no problem at all. I don't think that that head was torqued down correctly. Either it just torqued first and it wasn't retorqued after it warmed up or something or maybe the studs are not seated all the way down in the block. That's why I want to take them out to check that out because if they're not all the way down in the block, those nuts will bottom out and your torque wrench will, you'll think that the head is torqued on, but it's not torqued on correctly because that's what I think has happened. I just think that the head was not on there tight enough and it's driven for a few a few hundred kilometers or maybe a thousand or so kilometers and it's been on there just tight enough but when it was put on a little bit of stress now it completely failed but that's just my theory let me know down below what you think could that be the case it's what i think the case is but it could be something else also and one last thing before i go let me know what you think of these uh detailed videos uh which i'm doing on this project do you want me to continue doing that? Uh, just going through everything I do in a bit more detail than I do on my normal videos. Let me know what you think of that because I'm going to try and do two videos a week, uh, at least for the first part of this year and see how that goes because I have a lot of things I'm doing at the moment and I'm getting a lot of content from it. And I think you guys are enjoying watching it. So let me know. Do you guys want two videos a week? And do you like this more detailed look on this particular project? But until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Living with a Classic. I'll see you soon.